I mean, we're not embellishing this. In fact, I keep getting amazed, sir, at how aggressive and crazy the left is. They're not even the left. It's like a totalitarian criminal cult that knows exactly what they're doing. Uh, so, Sheriff Pittman, what do you say about that? Well, remember what is helping to push this movement. Because of social programs in this country, welfare, there's a lot of people out there that have attached their existence and livelihood on getting free stuff from the government. So can you imagine anyone that would advocate getting rid of that would obviously be viewed as the enemy. When conservatives simply want to empower people to take care of themselves. Now, that's a problem for a lot of people. If you've watched your grandmother, your mother, sit at home and wait to open the mailbox to get a check or food stamps or free phones or whatever, housing subsidies. It's really difficult to convince these people that getting up, going to work is a pretty good idea. Now, I grew up my entire life doing it. I'm sure so did you. So when I was 13, my dad said, go get a job. Absolutely. That's what it's about. You know, I hate the fact that I'm paying taxes and I don't like paying taxes. I, and I surely don't want to pay high taxes. But the fact that I know that there is some cost to make this country work, I would be so pleased if simply the government would do what the Constitution gave it the authority to do. Hell, just deliver the mail on time. That'd be pretty good. But they've dipped themselves into everything. And what we keep watching happen is this idea that it's certain people against certain other people's. And I think race is one of the most dangerous and volatile issues because they know that it is something that they can bring people into their, their camp uh, to do some pretty bad things. Ted, Ted Cruz called it the fascist left, and I agree with that because this isn't the left I've known in the past that had some good ideas. This is really a group craze that wants full power, and I think they're doing it because they realize there's a movement against it gaining steam, and this is really a desperate act of arrogance and fake bravada to try to finish their takeover. I think they're doing it because they know they're in trouble. Well, I, they are in trouble. And, you know, every time they, I can guarantee you, if they see more and more black conservatives start stepping up, uh, that scares the hell out of them. Because the commentary in this country has been for a long time, for several decades, that blacks tend to vote Democrat. 90%, yeah. Yeah. And so we have to start changing that by simply putting out the truth. And the truth is, the Democrat Party has done very little to help minorities in this country that was not somehow aligned to pushing their agenda. And they will use any tactic necessary to get it done. And we must, uh, I think we've got to take a few uh, plays out of their playbook and start hitting back. Do you think, though, they've jumped the shark trying to start a localized civil war with police? Well, you know, I think when you go back and look at some of the legislation that has come about in past years, whether it's uh, uh, things that have happened through the Patriot Act or NDAA, uh, you know, it's scary to believe that Barack Obama uh, has his finger on the ability to declare martial law in this country. Uh, so Hold on, stay there. This is bombshell because you go further than a lot of these constitutional sheriffs. You're like Mac. You know what you're talking about. Break down this move towards tyranny and why the Constitution is so important. When we come back, I'm going to give you the floor. So I'm going to let you roll, sir, with uh, just all your knowledge, uh, the situation with the execution of police around the country, where you think that's going, and more, and phone calls. 800-259-9231. I'm Alex Jones. Well, the next Sheriff Mack, the next uh, David Clark, Carl Pittman, and he's got a good chance. He's right up there as one of the front runners in a highly contested race for Harris County, one of the most populous counties in the United States. Is Houston the third or fourth largest city now? Uh, Houston is the third. Uh, if you look at the county itself, if we took just the unincorporated part of Harris County, we would be the fifth largest. So the uh, if you look at Harris County on a map, uh, we've got about 4.2 million people, according to the last census. Uh, but uh, uh, I think we are we are obviously continuing to grow. Harris County is about the size of Rhode Island. So uh, it's a pretty big footprint in Texas. Yeah, I mean, when you start driving south from Austin, after a couple hours, you hit the edge of Houston. It takes an hour and a half to go through it. Uh, it is just, and that's if there's no traffic, just gigantic. 
especially since I was a kid down there visiting my dad's uncle. Uh, you were interrupted by the break getting into the executive orders, the power grabbing, the bipartisan Patriot Act, uh, the, the announcements by Homeland Security. They're not worried about Islamic terror. They're not worried about um, drug gangs out of Mexico. They're worried about veterans, gun owners, Christians, conservatives. These are groups statistically from the criminology, as you know, the lowest crime rate. That's like saying they're worried about little old ladies blowing stuff up. Can you speak to that in your own words, uh, the new world order, the whole nine yards, and what you would do as sheriff to try to educate people about that? Well, you know, I really want to focus this on the office of the sheriff. Uh, and I'll use an example, and I kind of pick on the TSA quite a bit. Uh, every day in this country, every day in Houston, uh, TSA breaks the law, in my opinion whether it's groping and doing searches that are so outside the confines of what the Constitution would allow. But why are we doing it? We're doing it because we've had this, this story sold to us that they're doing it for our safety. Well, to my knowledge, I don't think uh, the TSA has uh, discovered one single terrorist. However, if we were to divert those resources being wasted, in my opinion, at the airports to the border. down to the border... Now, we just might stop some terrorists from coming into Texas and to the states, but that does not fit the, uh, uh, the storyline that uh, wants to be peddled by those in Washington. Uh, before the break, we were talking about the National Defense Authorization Act. Now, is it, is it too uh, far-fetched to believe that this racial strife that we see building in this country could be someone's attempt to create enough civil unrest to bring Barack Obama to a point to say he wants to impose martial law, martial law, of course, for our own safety, and possibly even consider suspending the upcoming elections. That may be far-fetched to a lot of people, but not too many years ago, uh, the uh, Obamacare would have been far-fetched to think Americans be, could be forced into buying insurance. So I think a lot of these things, we have to open up our minds and understand there is an agenda happening and we don't need to wait and let this happen and try to respond to it. We need to right now, and I do mean right now, do something about this because this experiment known as America, if we don't, is going to fail. That's right. America hasn't been perfect, but if you study history compared to others, it had some of the most original ideas, was exceptional. That's why the world started modeling itself after us. Now, Obama promised to radically transform America, and they are doing that, running it in the ground. I mean, I remember reading six, seven years ago that uh, social engineer professors wanted to ban the family, single-parent homes, and the word mother and father, uh, and you know, don't say boy or girl. They're now reprimanding kids in public schools across the country who use the word boy or girl. I mean, this is just, a t I, I call it a cult. I mean, if they can tell us what words to use and now say boy and girl is sexist or racist or something, it just shows these people are over the top. There is no limit to what they will do or what they will try to do. And so we must be on guard. We must absolutely stand at the gate and say we're not going to let this happen. Folks, if we lose this, where do you go? Where do we go if we let America slip away? Yeah, these other countries aren't going to let us come in. And we're sure not going to be able to go there and get stuff for free. Yeah, a lot of these people, a lot of these countries that we give billions and billions of dollars to, they don't like us. So in, in my humble opinion, I think we ought to let them not like us for free. And we don't need to <laughs> give them anything. That's a great idea. Let them not like us for free. <laughs> wow. I, you know, I want to go to some phone calls and things, but I, I don't know if you've heard some of these new Black Panther Party radio shows and others where they specifically say it's time to go out, start killing the white cops, killing white people, and even kill black cops if they're cops. Uh, and, and, and they just sit there calmly talking about this. I mean, if I talked like that, which I wouldn't, I guarantee you. I mean, I've had the police. I've had the FBI. I've had them here over mild stuff people said in comments that had nothing to do with me. And they asked me, what is your view of this? And I go, you were sent here basically by the administration. You know, I don't call for violence. You know, get out of here. If you want to subpoena who said this, go ahead. And then they subpoena and I give them the records because I don't support people going on my website and, you know, calling for killing people. Uh, and that's only happened a few times. But I know they show up here over comments on the message board 
How do these groups get away with this? Because it's not free speech when you say, go out and randomly shoot somebody in the back of the head when they're pumping gas. I mean, that is so cowardly. And, and, and then now we've got this whole race thing getting pushed so hard. Down in San Antonio, two kids spear the uh, referee in the back. It could have killed him. And they say, well, we heard him say something racist. Who knows if that's even true? But it's like the race card has become this get-out-of-jail-free card. So can you address both those? Well, you know, there are a couple of things in my life that I have never bought into. Uh, I don't play the race card. Uh, I think it is ridiculous. I don't buy into affirmative action to hurt one person in order to benefit another is exactly what uh, the civil rights movement in this country was supposed to have been about. Dr. King would absolutely have to be doing backflips in his tomb to watch some of uh, what has been done uh, supposedly continuing on his life's work. But what we see is an absolute uh, move to lawlessness. Because if we can get this thing to where there is no expectation of decency or law, that allows people to do anything they want. I look back years ago, uh, Alex, I was a young sergeant in Southern California on a police department there in San Diego County when the Rodney King riots happened. And it's interesting that I asked myself then how many of these people out looting and rioting in L.A. were out there because they were truly offended and bothered by what was done to Rodney King or how many were out there simply because it was an opportunity to behave badly. And I think that's what we're seeing in this country. If you want to handle a problem from a law enforcement standpoint, for example, in Baltimore, the day they were uh, going to uh, bury Freddie Gray, the law enforcement community should have been on tactical alert in that city. Had I been sheriff in that county, we would have done that. I'm not going to say it wouldn't have started, but I can guarantee you it wouldn't have lasted long. You cannot play soft-handed with people who do not want to comply. Well, the mayor said we wanted people to blow off steam and let them do it. In my experience, that's what makes cities burn down. Letting something start is what makes it happen. It doesn't stop it. And, uh, and that's the beauty of an elected sheriff. An elected sheriff does not take his marching orders from the mayor. And that is what we want in the city. We need to get politics as far away from law enforcement. And the, what about that mayor you had that like talked about arresting people that don't support lesbians or something? I mean, it's just bizarre. And this lady getting arrested for not doing the gay marriage license. I mean, it's just getting weird in this country. Well, well sure. Down in uh, down in Houston, uh, Mayor Parker had promoted an ordinance, basically, uh, you know, the, the hero ordinance, as it was called, trying to create equality where there were more than enough laws and rules on the books to, uh, to not have any of these folks uh, harmed. Here is my point. As a law enforcement officer, professional law enforcement officer, uh, this is my 30th year since I came into the business. I don't care what party you're on. I don't care what your lifestyle is. My job is to protect and serve and to defend and protect the Constitution. Sure, well, I'm a libertarian. I'm not even bashing those groups. We've got barber shops getting fined because a woman walks in in Pittsburgh and says, do my hair, and they go, we don't have the equipment to do that. We just, and they go, oh, that's discriminatory. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing discriminatory about we do men's hair. There's places that only do women's hair. I mean, it's just getting so crazy. Well, sure, I don't know, you know, what's next? If somebody has a Ford and they drive into a Chevy dealer and Chevy says, we don't have the parts. Are they, is that discriminatory? No. Don't give them ideas. I think you just, <laughs> that's true. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. That's a great analogy. Yeah. That's exactly the guy's like, of course we don't cut women's hair. Yeah. I mean, a barber shop is where you go in for 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, but again, this is what we see happening in this country. There is such a promotion for people to do anything that they want. And unfortunately, the leadership starting in Washington is almost fueling this behavior. You know, I've often thought there must be some vapor coming off the Potomac that just makes people lose their minds when they go to Washington. Well, it's divide and conquer. Yeah. Uh, here's my example. Young men throughout history want to prove their worth. They want to fight for their tribe, their country, their city, whatever their political geographic area is to prove their manhood. Okay, I get that. And people want to be adventurers. They want to go off and see the world. I get that too. But now with the controlled left in this country, the fascist left, it's like they want to make their bones. They want to join the military, but it's like the leftist military. They want to go sign illegals up to vote and give them driver's license. They want to go run voting scams. They want to go get people on welfare and 
you know, you know, run money laundering operations. I mean, there's really a lot of criminality, I find, in that party. It's, it's, it's true. I mean, look at Akern and the rest of it. And so that's how you make your